In small pupil cases, such as this, I use basically the same technique with a central puncture with a cystotome, extending out to the desired radius, which in this case will be under the border of the pupil, because this pupil is only three and a half millimeters. By watching the flap of the torn capsule, one can get a good idea of where the tear is progressing. To verify, a second instrument can be brought in through the paracentesis or through the incision to retract the iris to look at the tear to verify its diameter and extent at any point in time. The capsular rexus can then proceed, pausing occasionally to verify by retracting the iris with a second instrument, otherwise extending the tear with similar techniques as with a standard case. Another problem that you may have early in your experience is ending up with a CCC that is smaller than you would like or smaller than is adequate to implant the lens. Particularly if you do not re-grasp and have careful, careful control by multiple grasps of the capsule as you're trying to get larger arcs and uh, speeding up You may end up with a capsule opening that looks something like that, that may be adequate to do the phaco emulsification through, but not large enough to implant the lens. So if it's too small for either your cataract removal or the lens implantation, you can enlarge this capsule opening and still have a continuous curvilinear capsulorexis. Rather than using can openers to make this larger, again, use this technique with the Vanna scissor, making a, a little snip on one side to do the second stage of the capsule rexus. And I like to call these techniques where we use the Vanna scissor to make a snip and then extend the capsule rexus, a two-staged CCC. To enlarge this inadvertently small CCC, we're using a viscoelastic, and then we'll use the capsule scissors to start the second capsulorexis. We put a little viscoelastic inside the capsule as well as in the anterior chamber to separate the anterior and posterior capsule. You'll note the capsule scissors will make a snip in the capsule at about this location. And then a little extra ribbon will be removed with a tear just outside the original capsule rexus. In this particular case, not quite completing a full circle, but ending about there. So let's watch it now. Notice I'm careful not to roll the edge of the capsule and to only take a short snip, not right out to the tip of the scissors. Then that little triangle is grasped with forceps. At this point, it's very easy to control this tear because the capsule is now flat with the contents of the lens gone and the viscoelastic neutralizing any vitreous pressure. The same vector forces are required to direct the tear. Sometimes it is difficult to keep it from completing into the previous tear 
as you will note as it finishes here somewhat prematurely, but still large enough. I'd like to talk about some pitfalls of making that little snip with the Vanna scissor. If the scissor is cut right to the tip, it can leave a jagged edge with a little notch that won't tear in a, in a proper fashion. Also, so to avoid that actually, I don't cut right to the tip. Just make a partial snip with the capsule scissors. Another problem with making this snip is if the scissor itself rolls the edge of the capsule before the cut, it will create a notch type of cut. So what I do to avoid that is I place the scissors across the capsule and then I roll or slide the scissor a little bit toward the incision and make the cut as it's moving to make sure that it's not folded. That will create this nice definite little snip which then you can continue to complete the capsule rexus. In this case, which was an intumescent lens with poor visualization, a can opener technique was used. And you can see that a tear did develop at 12 o'clock. For placement of the intraocular lens and even to remove cortical material, there is a risk of further tears occurring. So the two-stage capsule rexus is now being used to enlarge this small can opener capsulotomy and to create a tear-resistant border of the continuous curvilinear capsule rexus. The two-stage capsule rexus is also commonly used for endocapsular phacoemulsification. Rather than just a slit in the capsule through which to do the phacoemulsification, one should use a continuous curvilinear opening. And this can be made in just the same fashion as a central opening. The phacoemulsification can be done through this opening and then the scissors snip and enlargement to an opening big enough to put the implant through. Rather than a small endocapsular opening superiorly, I think that for safety reasons, one can start with the same opening and just complete it as a half moon capsule rexus through which phacoemulsification can be done very safely, particularly using the second instrument from a side port. The two instrument techniques with phaco fracture and the divide and conquer techniques. Then one can use the two staged to enlarge the opening to the diameter required for lens implantation and to be symmetrical. This I call a hooded capsule rexus, just to reduce turbulence into the anterior chamber and corneal endothelium during phacoemulsification. This part of the capsule will contain the turbulence down within the capsule. Another challenge one may face in doing capsule rexus is to encounter a fibrotic area on the anterior capsule. If one finds an area of fibrosis where the tear will not extend through it, one can cut through that area of fibrosis with capsule scissors into normal capsule then continue again with forceps 
or cystotome to complete the capsular rectum.